It was sunny out. For the first time in many a rotation of the earth, our light source had poked its nosy little face out from behind one of our sky's dull grey blankets. If I'm mixing my metaphors here, it's because I was aware that the day's goodwill was about to be undone. For all intents and purposes, that day was a day like any other. I got up, I had a shower, I brushed my teeth. I realized that I hadn't yet eaten breakfast, so I had a bowl of crunchy nut. But it tasted weird because of the toothpaste residue, and I didn't really enjoy it. It was here from whence my ill feeling was spawned. During the school holidays, the days all bleed into one. It felt like a Sunday, but every day feels like Sunday when your weeks are indistinguishable. They meander around the empty room of time, occasionally brushing shoulders with the walls, but consistently unable to find the door. Yeah, you heard that right. It's times like these you value your day of the week socks. But when you're desperate for socks, you'll wear any sock on any day, regardless of whether they correspond. That day I was wearing my Wednesday socks, but I recall thinking, hey, today's not Wednesday when I put them on. So at least I had that to go on. Lunchtime arrived like that bus you swear should have arrived earlier, but aren't sure because some punk scratched off the bus schedule. All I could do was stick out my hand and pray that I had enough change. I was still reeling from my breakfast incident, so I figured I'd play it safe with a slice of toast. In the bread bin I found a fresh loaf of Warburton's. I allowed a smile to crack my haggard demeanor, and for a moment I experienced hope. Maybe, just maybe, that day was salvageable. I laid a slice on the grill pan, with all the care of a man who's tasted pain like I have. As they browned, I found my gaze drawn to the window, behind which the sun was out in full. It was bathing everything in its golden beams, shrouding us in a lie that the day was a good day. For that day was not a good day. And I was about to find this out. The hard way. The smell of fresh toast knocked on the door of my nose and told me it was almost ready. Two minutes, I replied. I just needed to prepare a few things. Of paramount importance was the butter. The binding medium between base and condiment, butter is as inseparable to the toast as a hard-boiled voiceover is to a film noir. But as anticipation peaked in the midday heat and the breeze from the open fridge caressed my face, I found my smile as absent as the butter. Gone. Stolen. Used up without having been replaced or written on the shopping list. It didn't matter. My toast was on a timer, and without proper spreadable, the process was as redundant as socks with sandals. I had to get to the bottom of this. I had to find out who, what, when, and, most importantly, why my buddy was missing. And I had to do so, before the light brown turned to charred black. My first port of call was the bin. If somebody used up the rest of the pack, then this would be the first place the evidence would be stashed. So predictable. Nothing in there, which can only mean one thing. The dustbin. Either the issue had been festering for longer than I was aware of, or somebody was being over-precautious. Now, I'm not one to count my chickens, so I figured I'd dig around, see what I could come up with. Empty. Was yesterday collection day? Could today be a Friday? How much of the holidays had I sleepwalked through? With no concept of time, sanity becomes as slippery as a week old bar of imperial leather in the shower. It's time I switched to a loofah. But this investigation is not over yet. Where most would see setbacks, I see opportunity. I may have hit a dead end in searching for stone cold proof of the Lurpex fate, but there are other angles to attack from. I refuse to believe that all loose ends have been tied up. There have to be butter traces somewhere in here. A stray strand on a knife, maybe. Or a careless lump on a plate. I know the people in this house. I know what they butter. Bingo. Looks fresh. This can't be more than 24 hours old. Something warm has been on here. There's a condensation mark typical of a jacket potato. Plain. No cheese. Who just has butter? I'm aware of tuna mayo, coleslaw, cheese and beans, but plain butter? My god. Who the hell am I dealing with? Wait. Of course. 
It all makes sense. In that one second, it all fell into place. Like that unnerving square bread that fits perfectly in the toaster. Let's just hope it comes up crispy. Lent. She gave up cheese for Lent. My guess is she let a guard slip when she thought she was alone and was about to break her dairy vow. She'll have been caught orange-handed and forced to abandon topping. She was always one to cheat her way out of a situation. Ha! All this for a jacket potato. Makes you think. It's time to do something. This investigation is in danger of going up in flames, and I don't want to be the one to waft it out. Action is needed. I have to tackle this thing head on. I have to grab the bull by the horns. Or the pigtails. Um, have you used the rest of the butter? No. Oh. Okay. I knew she'd lie. But now she's aware that I'm turning the heat up. How long before? Oh yeah, thanks for the butter. Didn't need it in the end. Um, thank, thank you. Yeah. 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 Right. See you then. Bye. Yeah. Yeah. See you later. Sometimes in life, you just overanalyze things. Hi, have you been to San Diego? Which in German is translated as meaning a whale's vagina. <laughs> Bye. Cheers, Father. <laughs> I knew this was going to be. <laughs>